When Jared heard Ian's explanation, his anger deepened. With his face starting to turn red, he snapped, Are you here to apologize or insult me? Your family's the one that's done wrong here, not mine. This attitude is befitting of a classless snake, not someone of your standing. Brooklyn gasped in surprise at her husband, and even Ellie looked over at him with a frown. However, Ian didn't seem bothered at all. Instead, he just quirked an eyebrow and replied, I'm not sure how my comment made you this unhappy. It wasn't meant to insult you at all. I was simply replying to what your wife said. However, I can't control your opinion of me. If you want to think I'm a classless snake, that's your choice. His tone was filled with sarcasm, but he didn't seem offended. Madison looked at him with admiration. Most of the time, Ian was like the sky above her head. No matter what happened, she knew he would always be there. Now, even though appearances had forced them to apologize to the Thompsons, he was still standing his ground and defending her. Jared exploded at Ian's response. He shot up off the couch and looked like he was about to yell at the other man. But right at that moment, Claire came out of the dance room. The Thompsons had a dance room on the first floor and the door opened right into the living room. The sound of the door opening quickly drew everyone's attention and distracted them from the argument at hand. As soon as Claire walked through the door, she froze as if she hadn't known that there were guests in the house. She was dressed in comfortable dancing clothes, with a loose shirt that draped down over tight pants that accentuated her figure. Her hair was tied up in a high bun, and she was holding a towel. After a moment... She used it to wipe the sweat off her forehead. Clearly, she had been hard at work. When Madison saw her, she felt a little bitter. Of course, she barges in here in her workout clothes, but still looks gorgeous, Madison thought. Ian, Claire called softly after she got her bearings. Her face was flushed as she lowered her head as if embarrassed. Madison and Ellie turned to look at Ian at almost the same time. The only reaction he gave was to slightly narrow his eyes. His gaze quickly scanned her clothes, but didn't linger anywhere. We must have caught her off guard. Her clothes aren't brand name or anything special. She really does look like she's surprised to see us, Madison thought. Sorry, I'll go get changed into something more appropriate, Claire apologized. As she walked toward the stairs, she actually shot a timid look at Madison. Her face made Madison a little uncomfortable. There was quite a contrast to the arrogant confidence she was used to seeing on the woman's face. Jared's anger had dissipated after the interruption, and he continued speaking more calmly. Ian, don't forget why you came here today. You're here to apologize, so I expected you to actually be apologetic. Ian turned back to him and responded, I'm here to apologize, but I don't intend to grovel. I hope you can accept that. With that, he reached for his wife's hand and moved to leave. The Thompsons were all surprised at his actions. They had expected him to either throw Madison under the bus or to be much more contrite. They were unsure how to react to his calm demeanor. Madison had imagined countless scenarios before coming here, but they had all been limited to her arguing with the Thompsons. She never would have thought that her husband would be the one who ended up angering them. Ian held her hand in his as they walked out of the room. Madison eyed him curiously when they reached the foyer. Although it wasn't showing much, he had gotten quite angry at the sight of Claire. He always controls his emotions so well. Strangely, he's actually mad now, she thought. Ian, Ellie's voice called out, accompanied by the sound of running and heavy breathing. It took her a few seconds to catch up to them. Because of her heart condition... She was out of breath just from the short jog from the next room. She wandered over to lean on the wall as she tried to catch her breath, which took a minute. I'm sorry, my father has such a horrible temper. She grumbled in annoyance. There was an apologetic look on her face as she spoke. I wasn't actually upset about what happened. This is all my parents doing. They got really angry when I went to the hospital. I'm sorry about all of this. Madison's eyes hadn't stopped scanning the young woman from the moment she approached them. While she was quite pretty in a delicate sort of way, her looks didn't compare to Kelsey's or Claire's. However, she was much smarter than those other women. 
Madison knew there was a plan forming in her head. She's not going to be easy to deal with, Madison thought. Elle turned to look at Madison as she continued. Please don't take what happened to heart. It's really okay. As for you and Ian, I hope this didn't cause any issues between the two of you. I would feel so horrible if that happened. Madison couldn't keep the corner of her lip from quivering up as she held back a sarcastic comment. She's really clever. Blaming herself for everything isn't a bad plan, she thought, knowing that Ellie did in fact mean to cause issues in their marriage. Before she could come up with an appropriate response, Brooklyn walked up behind her daughter. Madison felt her frustration rising as she tried to convince herself they hadn't planned this. It felt as though they were sneakily continuing the conversation and trying to catch her and Ian off guard. You just got here. How can you leave so soon? Brooklyn asked with a smile, as if they hadn't all just been arguing a minute before. She reached out to rest a hand on her daughter's arm as she said, You know that poor Ellie's health isn't good. We're waiting for a transplant, but until then, it's hard for her to get out and about. She has to be careful, especially after her trip to the hospital. Since you're already here, why don't you stay a little while? Otherwise, the poor thing will be bored to death cooped up in this house. Ian didn't respond as he turned to look at Ellie. Madison reluctantly replied, If that's the case, then let's stay. I know Grandma's very fond of you, so she would be happy if we took the chance to get to know each other. I heard she thinks of you as a granddaughter, so that makes us family. Ian looked at his wife, feeling proud of her response. I think Ellie may have picked a fight with the wrong woman. Madison can hold her own against any of their schemes, he thought. As expected, Ellie's face fell slightly when she realized her strategy wasn't going to work. Madison flushed a bit as she continued. Actually, if that's the case, you and Ian would be like siblings, right? She knew that Ian didn't like her treating Elle as an enemy, but she didn't feel like she had any other choice. The other woman clearly had feelings for her husband and wasn't holding back in her fight for them. Madison had to do whatever was necessary to protect her family. Ian was amused by his wife's comment, but he didn't let it show in his face as he nodded in agreement. With that, they all turned around and went back to the living room. Jared excused himself, saying he had work to do in his study. Brooklyn made small talk with them for a minute, but then she too made an excuse and walked out. That left the three of them all alone. Ian, I heard that your grandma likes loose leaf tea. I happened to get a really delicious blend a few weeks ago. Should I go grab some for her? Ellie stood up as she spoke and then walked into the kitchen without waiting for a response. Ian frowned and got up to follow her with a heavy sigh. While he didn't really want to be around her right then, he didn't think it was a good idea for her to be alone. After her trip to the hospital, he thought someone should be with her at all times in case she had another scare. Unfortunately, he hadn't been able to predict that Claire would come back downstairs as soon as he left the room. When she saw that Madison was the only one there, she reluctantly sat down on the couch across from her. The two of them sat in silence for several minutes. Even though she felt awkward, Madison didn't want to speak to the woman unless she had to. You know, I thought you were smart, but you ended up having to apologize today, didn't you? Claire mocked. Even though she was also fighting for Ian, she didn't think that Madison was a match for her older sister. She had fought with Ellie herself, and she had never won. However, her words gave Madison pause, and she peered over at her curiously. She knows this wasn't my fault. She actually believes this was Ellie's doing, Madison realized. Claire got up, walked in front of Madison, and said, I hope you live a long time. That way, you'll get to see the things you care about get taken away from you, too. I really look forward to the day Ian treats you the way he treats me. I wonder what you'll do then. Madison looked at her in confusion, unsure of what point she was trying to get across. After admiring the puzzled look on Madison's face for a minute, Claire said, I'm curious about something with this whole incident with Ellie. Does Ian believe your side of the story? Her question made Madison stiffen involuntarily. Even though Ian had told her that he would always be on her side, he hadn't actually said that he believed her. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure he was trying to keep the peace without having to take sides. 
she thought. Claire had to hold back a laugh at the look on her rival's face. After two years, she was very familiar with the kind of man Ian was. He was a man of his word, but he was also ruthless. He could spoil you to the ends of the earth, and he could destroy your hopes and dreams. To a large extent, he had inherited Diana's iron fist. When he wanted, he could be more heartless than anyone.